Great to be with you this morning. Hallelujah. Just to kind of keep for tradition, I just need to let you know that I have no idea what the Ducks did yesterday. <laughs> and I don't even know what's going on in the NFL, so I, I can't give you any of that to get excited or depressed or whatever we do with that. But, uh, but I'm just not that spiritual of a guy, so I just wanted to let you know. So, uh, yeah. But I, we are going to stay with a little bit of tradition, so I'm going to give you, and yes, you guessed it, a story about the Smelzer kids. Can we do that? Okay. Not so much Penny, but Evie and Jack. So we're going we're gonna, to, I was actually privileged to go when Jake and Bethany got their new house, is I went over to see Jake's home office, and I went in and says, oh, this has to change, because one wall was pink, the other one was green, and the other one was yellow, and I says, I, I think I can help you with this. So I went over one day and started setting up to paint the, paint the office. And Evie comes in, and she walks in with her hands on her hips like this. Who are you? Uh, I'm Mike. I'll be your painter for the next couple days. Oh, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to paint this office. It's, okay. I'm keeping my eye on you. <laughs> okay. And then about 10 minutes later, she walks in and goes, oh, I just wanted to let you know when you're finished here, I would like a castle painted on my front door of my bedroom, just so you know. <laughs> okay, I'll get right on that as well. I never did actually paint the castle. I think she still holds that against me. So, uh, but then a couple weeks later, Jack comes up and says, hey, you know, you painted my dad's office and everything, but I wanted to let you know something. He goes, he put speakers in there. Speakers. There are speakers in there. I went, speakers? Yes, I thought you should know. And so these kids are awesome, and we love them. And uh, so I, I love hanging out with them and just sharing stuff. It's great. But, but as you saw by the, the video that we're going to continue in the minimal series, we started last week. How many enjoyed last week's message? I just wanted to go do more about being having less in my life. I don't know how that works. But uh, we, Jake gave a, a great message on, on uh, margins and the minimal the minimal series. Everybody say minimal seven times really fast. Okay, go ahead. Minimal, minimal, minimal. Oh, yeah. Some of, you, some of you are doing pretty good, actually. So, But, uh, you know, if we will listen to that message about margins and really implement some of those things, it's going to help us manage our life better, but I really think it's going to help us enjoy life better. What do you think about that? And Jake was challenging us to... to Find five things in your life that are the essentials. Make a list of essentials. Did anybody do that this week? you got to minimize things down to doing that, okay? so. And uh, I think we could all agree that the number one thing on the essentials list is our relationship with God. I mean, he really is the big deal. There really isn't anything else in life. A lot of times what we tend to do with Jesus is we, we tend to compartmentalize him in our life with all of our other things. We've got family, job, recreation, Jesus, and it doesn't work that way. He wants to be the foundation underneath all of it. Like the verse Jake shared about, seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be added unto you, taken care of. We obviously agree that relationship with God is the number one thing on the list. But in this context, relationship is really all about communication. Is that right? Anybody try to do a relationship with no communication? How about any husbands and wives here? You try to do relationship with no communication. It really doesn't work, does it? And so we need to get communication down if we're going to understand what this relationship with God thing is all about. And so in the context we're talking about, we're talking about relationship and, and communication with God well, we really just typically call that prayer. Of course, there's other aspects to it. There's reading the word, there's worship. But really, prayer is, is one of the main things we want to look at today. So I want, to, I want to do what I say, have a, a new look at prayer. Can we do that today? I mean, it's 2018, it's a new year. Why don't we just take a new look at this whole idea of prayer? And before we get going any further, because I, I, I said the word prayer and some people went, oh, because... Some of us put prayer in the same category as things like watching my cholesterol, going to the gym, going to the dentist. It's like things that we should be doing better in. Is that right? Uh, how many could do better in prayer? I mean, you're, you're, so, you're so condemned, you can't even get your hand in the air almost. Can I just relieve that pressure to you this morning? 
There's, there isn't going to be any guilt or shame about how you've been doing in prayer. Can we just let that go this morning? Everybody just breathe. <sighs> breathe that out. Just release that. Because this morning, it's not about doing better. You know, this is the minimal message. So doing, just doing better is not the answer. Is that right? But can I just and challenge us a little bit? How about if we all just go to the next level in prayer? Can we do that? Just bump it up one notch. Anybody here say, I can do that? Look at the person next to you and say, I can do that. Just go up one notch. That's all we're talking about. And there's going to be no guilt, no shame, no condemnation. You should be doing better. And because we're used to preachers kind of making us feel like we should be doing better. Is that right? But none of that today, okay? So we're just going to look at this whole idea of prayer and really what it's all about. You know, I've been investigating this whole idea of prayer for about 22 years, really focusing on it. Um, actually had Jesus came to me in an encounter and asked me to give a, my life for intercession, which is a form of prayer. Intercession typically is, I refer to it as simply, it's focused prayer for others. That's easy, simple, we can do that, right? And so we're going to look at this whole thing of prayer. I've actually, in a lot of circles, I'm known as the prayer guy. Oh, he's the prayer guy. And I used to struggle with that a little bit because, like, I do do other things, you know. There's other things in my life, in ministry and things. But now I just, I wear that as a badge of honor. I think to be called the prayer guy is, like, so awesome. I think it's something I'm just so, so excited about. So, so we're not going to be uh, re relating things. It's, it's not that I am just the, I'm the prayer guy and you're not the prayer guy. We're all called to this thing called prayer. And I want to just simplify it and make it so obtainable and so accessible to you that you can go, at the end of this message, you go, I can do that. I can be involved in that. Not like, oh, I can never be like him. That's not what this is all about. It's about coming into an understanding. So let's begin to think differently about prayer. Can we do that? And the first thing I want to challenge you in to think differently is understand that prayer is essential, not optional. Essential, not optional. Because some people think that prayer is like, well, if I have time, I'll, I'll pray. You know, if I, if I can just kind of work it in here a little bit there, a little bit there, that's fine. In the Christian life, this is one of the big deals. It is a foundation stone. It is a pillar. It is one of those things that we cannot live without. If you think you can live the Christian life without prayer, you're, you're misunderstanding, you're delusional, you're actually on, your, on a path that's going to be a struggle for you. And here's, here's the primary verse. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Book of Acts, the church has just been birthed. They're just establishing what, it, what, it, what it's like to walk with Jesus. And they said, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing meals together, I like that part, yeah. and to prayer. You know the part where it says they devoted themselves to fellowship? You know, they, they said in the uh, book of Acts that they met in the temple and they met house to house. That whole house to house, you know what that is in our context? That's joy groups. Yeah. They met in joy groups. They got together in small groups and had community together and really begin to connect with one another and that's an amazing aspect of the Christian life. So I encourage you, go to the next table and find out about a joy group in your area. Yes. That's great. All right. I had to throw my DJ voice in there just for a second. Okay. Another verse about prayer. This was in Luke 18, 1. It says, one day Jesus told his disciples a story. Us King James people will call that a parable. He told a parable. He told the Alex story better. He says, they told them a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. If we can get that one thing down, we're going to be set for the rest of our life. Always pray and never give up. Just find ourselves in the place of prayer and decide this walk with Jesus, I'm going to go the rest of my days going onwards with him. One of my heroes is a guy named David Livingston. They ask him, well, where are you going to go next? What are you going to do? Uh, what would you like to do? Where would you like to go? And he says, oh, basically anywhere, be it forward. As long as I'm going forward, that's sign me up. Because there's no room for going back. Is that right? 
In this walk with Jesus, we're going to begin to go forward. So we're going to begin to develop communication. We're going to begin to develop a dialogue with the Lord. We're going to, we're going to talk and we're going to listen. Is that right? We're going to find ourselves in the place of prayer. And have you ever heard somebody say, if you could just commit 10 minutes a day to prayer? 10 minutes? If you get into this thing, it will not be enough time. You will find yourself going, well, I need more time for this thing. Prayer. I'm going to have to get up earlier because I really need to engage more. Because you're going to step into relationship. And relationships take time. Is that right? You're going to have an interesting thing because I just need to let you know that if I can do this thing called prayer, anybody can do this. When I got saved when I was 17, I was a shy, insecure, rejection mentality, inferiority complex guy. I mean, it was so bad that I went to this Bible study with other teenagers and you ever been in a, you're sitting on the floor, we just used to sit on the floor back in the 70s, I don't know what the deal was that. But we're sitting on the floor, and you ever been in one of those prayer meetings when you kind of know it's coming around to you? You know, here, that guy prayed, now this guy's praying, and now this guy's praying, and now I'm next. And I'm like freaking out. And so this is exactly the prayer I prayed when I was come to my turn. I am physically shaking. I said, God, Please help us to help ourselves in Jesus' name, amen. And all my friends are going, you know, cracking up. And, but something clicked in my heart, and I go, I didn't do very good that first time, but I'm not stopping. And then I find myself every night, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to seek God, and I'm going to find out what it means to be in relationship with Jesus. Wow. So we need to understand that prayer is essential not optional. Can we get that one? Here's another thing that we need to begin to understand. When you pray, you need to understand your voice is heard in heaven. What? It just seems like when I pray, it hits the ceiling and bounces down. No, actually, in reality, your voice is heard in the heavenly courts. Really? Well, where's that in the Bible? Well, let's look at, take a look at Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, it says this. Don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourselves before God, your request was heard in heaven. I have come to answer your prayer. Well, you can say, well, that's, that's Daniel. That's, you know, he's the... Uh, Prophet of the Old Testament, Prophet Daniel. Of course, when he would pray, God would listen. Well, you need to, we need to understand that God wants us to have a different view of ourselves. Not a prideful view, but maybe a different view. Because a lot of us don't think we're all that great. Anybody here, you're thinking, I'm not that great. I'm pretty ordinary. I'm just one of the guys or the girls, right? Can I give you an indication? You are not just one of the guys, or just one of the girls. You are a prince and princess of the king of kings. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. You have a calling and a destiny on your life, and you have an eternity to spend with him. So when you pray, your voice is heard in heaven. Angels are standing at attention, waiting for orders when you pray. Me? I'm just... No, you need to understand God. He thinks you're incredible. Do you know that God loves you so much, he stands by your bed at night and sings songs over you and strokes your hair and just adores you? Oh, me? I'm nobody. Yeah, you. We have a really good, good father who loves us, don't we? I'm going to tell you a quick story. I was in Scotland, and I was preaching this Saturday night meeting at uh, somewhere, and uh, it's been a few years. <clears throat> And one of the things that my wife, Darla, and I are, are really all about is young adults. We love young adults. We've had, actually had people our age, like, ask us, why do you hang around with those people? Like, those people. Like, there's, and I'm thinking, why don't, they're the most amazing people on the planet. I tell you, I, those guys at the U of O, I love those guys. I love spending time with young adults. So, so every time I'm at a new place, I'm looking for the young adults in the room, you know, and I see this, these two in the back, it's a guy and a girl, and they're, they're kind of, and people were getting prayer for healing and stuff, and so I'm, hey, how you doing? My name's Mike, and hey, great, and I said, did you get prayer? And he says, yeah, I got prayer for something, 
And this girl sitting there, she's like 21. She goes, I go, did you get prayer for something? And what did you get prayer for? And she goes, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> and I went, oh. So I came around and sat next to her. And I go, well, something's going on. I'm going to go find out what it is. And I go, so, so what's, what's happening? What's going on? And she goes, she starts to cry. She goes, actually, I think I've messed up so much that it, I can't see any possible way God could love me. And she's crying, and I says, well, actually, that's not true at all. God loves you so much. And then I had this thought. I don't know how biblical it was, but I thought I'll run with it. I said, actually, you do know that we serve a God of like a million second chances, don't you? So have you started on your second million yet? And her eyes got big. Her countenance changed. And for the next 10 minutes, I just told her how much God loved her. I said, God loves you so much. There's nothing you can do to cause him to love you anymore. And there's nothing you can do to cause you to love you any less. He just loves you. He adores you. He thinks you're amazing. If we'll get that revelation, when we go to the place of prayer, we're going to understand that our voice is being heard in heaven. Yeah. Battalions of angels are being released as we pray. We've got to have a different view of prayer. We got to understand really what's going on. And we got to understand that it's God who loves us immensely. Wow. The number three reason I want to give you that why we need to take another look is this whole idea that the number one reason God wants us to pray is he wants intimacy with us. He wants to go beyond surface level just, hi, how you doing? Hey, occasionally bump into you. Oh, hey, how's it going? Hey, what do you think of the weather? Da, da, da. He wants to go beyond that surface level relationship. He wants to have a deep, intimate relationship with you. A close, familiar relationship where not only do you know him, but he knows you. You know, in Matthew 7, Jesus was talking about the guys that were saying, hey, we did all these great things in your name. And he goes, yeah, but, but there's a problem here. I never knew you. I always used to get so convicted reading that verse. Like, I would, I would pray the sinner's prayer again just to make sure, you know. <laughs> just to, okay. But it's about relationship. It's about the number one reason God wants me to pray is not so that I can pray so he can get things done on earth. Not so we can just accomplish stuff. Not so he, he can just, but really out all of that is an outcropping of our relationship. Do you know everything you do in your ministry, everything you do in your life is the design to be done with him? The Bible calls us co-laborers with Christ. Is that right? So what that means, whatever your ministry is, whatever your calling is, you get to do that with Jesus and you side by side. You get to do that as you're developing a relationship, as you're daily in a place of interaction and conversation with the Lord. And it's not just the one-time thing. It's not just where you, you have a few minutes in the morning and that's it. You don't actually talk until the next day. Paul even challenged us to go way beyond this. You know what Paul said? Pray without ceasing. Okay, how do you do that? I mean, I've got a job and I'm around people and I talk to other people, there's people around, I just can't pray all the time. What do you mean? What that means is you have an ongoing dialogue with the Lord throughout the day. There are times when you have little bits of time through your day that you could actually be talking with him and sharing things. And, and even as you're going into a meeting or something, you're, you're asking him to help you in that situation. You're asking him to walk through that, that thing. You know, it says in Psalm 23, that, that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me. You know, the whole idea of Emmanuel is God with us. He said he'll be with us. So all day long, we, have, we, have, we start the day with this, this set aside time with the Lord, but then we're continuing in communion and relationship all throughout the day. And there's especially times when we can take advantage of things. I was actually working a job one time and I timed it. I have four minutes from the time I leave my car to the time I get into the building. I had to walk all up. I go, that's four minutes I can commune with the Lord. Wow, take advantage of those things. He wants relationship. 
This guy named Andrew Murray, he's, a, uh, he's, he's been long dead. He's got great books, but he's been called an apostle of prayer. He said this, some people pray just to pray, and some people pray to know God. So when we're taking a new look at prayer, let's say I'm not just praying to pray, because I should, and I need to do better, and I need to have a daily time, and I need to do this as to be a good Christian, and I'm going to try really hard, and I'm not, not any of that, just to know him, just to have a relationship with him. I think the 12, when they were with Jesus, the biggest thing is that you would ask them, what's your, what's your most exciting aspect of your time with Jesus, they would have said, well, not, they wouldn't have said, no, it's the miracles, and they, we saw him do this. They would have said, we got to spend time with him. We got to be with him. We got to interact with him. We got to have real heart-to-heart conversation. That's, that's amazing. But one thing we're going to have to understand is that if we're going to have this relationship with God, we're going to have to allow him to help us deal with some of our issues. Because a lot of times, issues we're struggling with, it could be anything. It could be anything from fear. You could have an anger problem. You could struggle with uh, some addiction. You could have uh, a struggle with any of these other things. For years, I struggled with rejection. Anybody here, you struggle with rejection? I mean, you're, you're struggling so much, you can't, you're afraid if you raise your hand, you're going to get rejected. That's how that goes. If I the whole reject me if I raise my hand. You know, I struggle for, actually, I was going to write a book on rejection, but I was afraid nobody would read it. <laughs> you know, I understand rejection. What we need to do is allow the Holy Spirit to bring healing to our issue, to help us with our struggle, so that we can get that out of the way and we can step into the place of prayer unhindered. St- knowing that he's with us, he loves us, and we get to experience that communion, that experience that, that love we have for him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish up here just by sharing a, a story. Actually, it was a vision that I had. I hope we're okay with the vision. It wasn't the Bible. There was, Jesus had vision. Um, but, uh, but I had this vision one time. And in the vision, and it may sound a little strange because in vision, strange things. Anybody have a dream from God and you, it was kind of weird? Okay, yeah. It's kind of the same kind of thing. But in this vision, I saw Jesus and he had these two horses and he goes, I want you to come riding with me. And I'm going, really? That sounds awesome. And so I, I jump in these horse in the vision and I'm riding with Jesus. And so we're going along like this and I'm looking at him, he's looking at me and we're just, so loving this time. I mean, it's amazing. And then he goes, hey, stop. And we get off the horse, and he comes over, and he wraps me in this big hug that lasted like five minutes. And in this hug, he kept saying to me, isn't it just great to be together? Isn't it just great to be over and over? Isn't it just great to be together? And I'm saying, yes, it's great to be together. And if I could tell you one thing about this whole thing about prayer, that the most important aspect is you and him being together. You and him being in relationship. You and him being in connection. So I want to challenge you. Are you willing just to go to the next level in prayer? 